that in, in a little bit too. <sighs> we're going to oh, remove dear. them all together and we're going to replace them. Now I have not been able pa to find... Pa-ching, Greetings from the boatyard. Uh, it's been quite some time since we've done much filming, although uh, the videos have been going out every week. I think we're just now for the first time almost in line with real time. Uh, the new Windover's back there behind that transport truck, as you can see. She's been faring really well. It's just early January right now, and uh, we've had an unusually warm winter, so this has allowed us to go and uh, get a few jobs done that we uh, hadn't intended on getting done right away. Uh, first and foremost is the lifelines. Uh, we want to remove them and we want to polish all of the uh, all of the bits that are uh, stainless because when you take stainless steel, even though they call it stainless, when you take stainless steel into a salt environment it gets a lot of rust on it so we're going to remove the rust and uh, polish it mechanically so that when we come back uh, we're going to have uh, lovely shiny stuff. A uh, few things happening that we haven't talked about yet and Deb and I are about to uh, let you all know about these changes. Some really exciting things coming down the pipe. So uh, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas to all of you and uh, away we go. Wind over water in the boatyard. <laughs> Anyway, right now we're preparing for the refit. There's not a lot we can do as far as uh, uh, exterior work, but we can do a few little things. And one of the things we did today was look at the stanchions. There's a company called Suncor that has kindly offered to uh, give us new lifeline material and a few other stainless bits. And we'll introduce you to them a, a little later on, but they've come on board as a, as a partner with us to bring some of these DIY videos. Uh, so, one of the major things they build are lifelines. These are the old lifelines off the boat and as you can see, they're all a little bit yellowed and uh, there's, a, there's some rust in uh, along the edges now. Some cracks in the um, plastic coating some as well. Some cracks in the plastic coating. Where water gets in and then you never know if um, underneath there's damage because yep. you can't see it. So and also too, the clips weren't working that well. A lot of them were... Um, you couldn't screw them any tighter to yeah. tighten up the lifelines, so yeah. we had lifelines that were sagging, which yeah. we didn't feel was very safe either. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the new lifelines, we've decided to go with stainless. Some of the race boats now, they, they specify that you've got to have exposed yeah, stainless no, I heard lifeline. That too, yeah, yeah. And you didn't really like the idea of stainless lifeline. Well, I just like the look of the white. It just looks clean, and yeah. but I understand this for safety reasons why you'd want to go for um, you know the stuff that isn't plastic coated. Yeah, yeah. But you like the look of the stainless steel. Oh, I think it's going to look. Yeah, so it's going to look smart. So. You'll win this one. I'll get the <laughs> next one. <laughs> so uh, a couple of things we're going to do. Obviously, we're going to replace this. The pelican hooks. They've uh, been in the salt for a long, long time, and so all the chrome has come off. I don't know. I think they're nickel over bronze these, uh, but it might be uh, just stainless. I'm not sure. But anyway, they've, uh, they've really uh, become corroded, and for that reason we want to change those out too. They just don't look that pretty. So new pelican hooks, new lifelines, all the terminal ends. This is sort of an old school terminal end they've got on this, that um, they're a little bit difficult to adjust. And um, I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to something that I can adjust a little easier. Yeah, when I adjusted them, it was brutal. Yeah. I had to, uh, you can't get a, you can't get a, a wrench or anything, yeah. Yeah. so I had to use pliers from this angle just to hold it yeah. or to twist it. It was really uh, yeah. quite a... So they've probably been on the boat for the last 40 years. It's a 1983, 
So it'll be uh, 36 years that these these have served the boat well, and uh, so they're gonna go. Let's talk about the stanchions. Yeah. Now, you were concerned about the height of the stanchions, and they're very low. They're 24 inches, I believe, right, yeah. Yeah. from the deck, which is. I mean, you're tall. I'm fairly tall. I'm five seven. You're six four, mm -hmm. and. Um, I just find that the 23 inch isn't great. I wish they were, what well, you can get up to 27 inch. Well, I guess if you, you were, get yeah. 36 inches if yeah. you want. Yeah. So, but we're going to stay with the 24 so we don't have to adjust the push pit or the pull pit, right? Oh, that's part of the reason that I argued for 24 inch ones. But I guess the main reason is that I think lifelines can make you a little overconfident, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you're going forward, the purpose of the lifelines are to stop you uh, as a last resort to go over, uh, you know, in a sea. But if you're in a seaway, I mean, you should be keeping one hand for yourself and one for the boat. You should have a tether if the weather is really, um, really bad. And the lifelines should not be depended on to keep you in. Okay. Well... Then we'll have to disagree on that one because I think that lifelines are there to keep you in and to grab. But yeah. when, especially when you're so tall, when you when you're walking down and you're holding onto the lifeline, yeah. it causes you to bend over a bit. Yeah. Which I mean, sometimes you do have to crouch down if it was really rough. But if it's not really rough, you know, and and you have to crouch down, I think that that impedes your um your balance and your footing. But there anyway. is an argument out there that, uh, for instance, with tethers on. A lot of people use uh, jack lines along, you know, yeah. both sides of the deck yeah. with a tether on the jack line. So each time you go forward, you're tethered to this jack line. And there is an argument that they're more dangerous than they are safe. What are? Uh, jack lines. And I think the same holds true for lifelines. And this is the oh reason. Oh my gosh, is this the argument that the seat belt is not safe in case no, no, no. like out of the one percent of accidents completely different, that ha oh, well, completely different. But here's here's the thought if you go forward with a jack line on a jack line that's on the outside of the boat that allows you like our our tethers are six feet long or nine feet long six feet long i think i think six feet yeah so if i was tethered to the walkway on a line that runs along the walkway and i fell overboard i'd be really i'd be in the water and what happens with a with a tether with jack lines is that the victim goes right to the back of the boat and ends up six feet off the stern yeah. bouncing in the wake of the boat yeah. without any means of getting back on board what happens so, if he wasn't jacked on jack lined on well he's going to die there you know if he's single handing out in the ocean and he falls overboard yeah and he's in that position he's going to die anyway yeah. so the thought is if you're going to go forward make sure you're attached to a line that's in the middle of the boat so that you can't get to the lifelines. You follow me? So if you do fall down, at least you stay in the boat. Oh, and you don't fall overboard. And you board. don't fall overboard, yeah. Yeah, well, that makes sense. So, yeah. and I think the so lifelines... So it would be almost like um, tethering yourself off the mast, but then you yeah. have to get through the mast to tether yourself onto it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have to give it some thought, but I think to put a tether line up the middle of the boat rather than on either side would be a wise... Wise thing. I so think that, I've seen like um, uh, stainless steel um, tubing as yeah, a le as a tether, which yeah. would be a good idea too. Something you could just hook right on. Yeah, yeah. And then it would just be. Like and you can a, you can bring your 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 tether into the cockpit, but leave it attached. Yes. So that as you're about to go into the cockpit, you snap it on. You unsnap the one in the cockpit, snap it onto your. Before vest, you unsnap the other one. Then go in the walkway yeah. and go up. Yeah. yeah, well, we'll figure that out. We have some research to do so, for that. So but back, back to the lifelines, the, the, yeah. the same kind of false security is there that even if you had 36-inch lifelines, which would be ridiculously high, yeah. on, even on a 40-foot boat, it would seem yeah. super high, 36 feet is, uh, inches rather is still only at my knees, you know, just above my knee, 36 inches, mm -hmm. three feet, right? So I'm... I'm uh, yeah, but I, did, I think that... Uh, anyway, well, maybe halfway up my calf actually. Yeah, I but still, so. they're not. They're not. It's not like I'm in a basket or something that's going to hold me in. So, 
So what's the purpose of the lifelines? They're, the purpose of the lifelines is if you do fall down or the boat heals or broaches, yeah. when, you, when you fall, you've got at least something as a last resort to grab onto. Well, I use the you. lifelines all the time. I don't use it as a last resort. If I'm going forward, the mm -hmm. lifelines are what I hold on to. So if I'm holding on to the top of the cabin, onto the handhold, mm -hmm. then I go onto the lifeline. One mm -hmm. hand for yourself, yeah. then yeah. I switch it over. So I'm always constantly switching yeah. what I'm holding on to for and safety. And those two things are at the same elevation, right? The, the handholds and the lifelines? Um, They're kind of at the same height on our boat anyway. Yeah, yeah. they might be actually, because the lifelines I find, again, are I'll very low. I'll put up a, an image of our boat. Have, you can have a look at this. And these are the 24 inch. These are the ones mm -hmm. that are originally on the boat. But we've been noticing some stress cracks in the... Um, in the stanchions. Do we have one here that we could see? Yeah, this that, one's quite bad here. Oh, yeah. I'll just put it in front of this. This one's, this one's bad too. So you, see that? you can see that they've obviously hit something with the boat and, and the stanchions have been bent and then straightened again, but they've cracked. Yeah. Yeah. they've cracked. They probably didn't heat them up before. If they would have heated them up, it probably wouldn't have cracked, eh? Unless maybe they cracked when they... I think they bent over and someone has bent them back again. Yeah. We had that on Windover when we hit the the shore there on in the, in the dismal, dismal swamp. swamp yeah. That had but bent this down, one here is also damaged as well. I mean that yeah. one's that one's even crooked. It's got a big wonk in it. So yeah. this one should be replaced as well. Yeah. So do we go two inches higher? Because I think we could probably do that with the. We could somehow. Make it look nice with the push pit and the. And well, here's my concern that you're going to be able to see the lifelines traveling up. They won't be level. Yeah. They won't match the shear of the boat. They're going to go up and then they're going to go across and then they're going to go back down again. And I think that two inches, which is really all you want to add. Well, that's all we could add without doing modifications. Without looking, looking crazy, yeah. If you're going to add two inches, it's not really going to... Well, but if you have to replace the stanchions anyway, then why wouldn't you go two inches? I don't think we have to replace them. Well, you have to replace those two, unless you weld that one. Yeah, these are a hundred dollars a piece. I'll source them out cheaper. I don't know if you can, but I think they're very, I think right they're now, very heavy. Actually, they, they're really are, nice. You see, these uh, inserts are welded in. I'll show you that here. They're welded in, so it. These are pretty burly, burly stanchions, but. Uh, well, I don't mind keeping them. I mean, that's fine. I mean, you learn to, every boat you get, you learn how to, to you know, walk negotiate around on it and to be safe. And, yeah, negotiate. Yeah. That's yeah. a good word. So it looks like we need two. I'm not seeing, I think these two here will need to be replaced. I can source those out. And the gates. No, I haven't got the gates here because I've got to unbolt them to get them out. And you think the gates need to be replaced? I think... Um, two of the gate posts need to be replaced. There's one side of the boat where they've been hit, obviously, and, and straightened out again, and they're really, really mad. Well, there's one that's really, and we've got a really? leak. We've got a leak on that side of the yeah, cabin as yeah. well. So I'm going to remove them all together, and I'll, we'll we'll show you that in in a little bit too. <sighs> we're going to oh, remove dear. them all together, and we're going to replace them. Now I have not been able -ching, to find. Pa -ching. I've not been able to find the gate stanchions in the style that we have. So we might have to go with flat top 24 inch gate stanchions but with a different base and I, I'll have to I'm okay with that. I didn't like the way the bases are. On They're kind of rinky dink too. They are yeah. yeah. They're yeah. Um, just a bent bent, uh, yeah. bent metal and then hammered out on the bottom. Yeah. All I did was flatten in a vise the, yeah. the tubing and and then uh, Pinched it. drilled a couple holes in it. Yeah. So. So I think we could do something better than that. They're about $150 a piece. So there's $300 there, there's $200 here, so there's $500 worth of parts that need to be replaced. And uh, yeah. Well, unless we can find them used, which we might be able to. We might be able to. Yeah. 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 And we're going to polish these at my father's place. My father has a big garage with every kind of tool you can imagine. Okay. Anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, 
new lifelines. Uh, thank you, Suncor uh, Stainless, for yes, thank your, you. uh, your very generous donation. And uh, so the new lifelines are coming, and we're going to replace a couple of stanchions, and uh, you'll see that very, very shortly coming up. Talk to me.